Greetings people of the internet. My name is Yvonne at Shingapungu, an associate here at Beggy's Law Offices in Chambers. Today we discuss a very pertinent topic, the topic of divorce, and specifically what does the Kenyan law say about divorce. Now we get divorce laws in two specific acts in Kenya. Number one, the Marriage Act, and number two, the Matrimonial Properties Act. Divorce is defined as the legal dissolution of an already existing marriage. Now, the Kenyan law recognizes various marriages. Um, I'll just name a few. The civil, a civil marriage, a Christian marriage, Hindu marriages, customary marriages, Islamic marriages. Now, if two people who are in a marriage for some reasons cannot, can no longer be party to a marriage, the law provides for a legal way out of the marriage. This brings me to the topic of grounds for divorce. What are the grounds for divorce that are provided for under the Kenyan law? And there are as follows. Number one, cruelty. If there's any form of cruelty in your marriage, for example, physical, emotional, any form of cruelty, this is a ground for divorce. Number two, adultery, which is very self-explanatory. Number three, extreme depravity. This means that either of the spouses are depriving any of the spouse something so core to their marriage that they feel like they need to, they could give up anything or they're in the brink of insanity in order to get this specific need met. For example, compassion, conjugal rights, this is a ground for divorce. Number three, desertion. Number four, separation. The Kenyan law provides that you need to be separated for more than two years for this ground to hold water. And last but not least is irretrievable breakdown of a marriage. Now, I'd like to expound further on this point. The reality of marriage is that sometimes it can be become unbearable for reasons that observers, third party observers, may not understand or may feel like it is very trivial. And so when Parliament was enacting the Marriage Act 2014, they included this ground to be part of the grounds for nullification of a marriage because they understood that parties could get to a point where they can no longer communicate, they don't meet eye to eye, the communication has irretrievably broken down, they can no longer solve their issues as they arise. And so this is a ground that they Parties can come to court and say that we can no longer meet eye to eye, we are no longer able to solve our differences, and it can be a ground for dissolving this marriage. Now, you may ask, can I come to court and mutually decide, my partner and I, that we no longer wish to be involved in this marriage? Now, the Constitution under Article 45 recognizes the family as a core unit of our society and also goes ahead to ask the state to protect it at all costs. And so this specific article in the constitution then ties the hands of the court not to allow dissolution of a marriage based on mutual agreement between the parties. So our system of divorce is very fault based. And so you have to prove to the court that there's one party who is bringing this marriage down and because of their conduct then you wish to no longer be a party to the marriage and so the simple answer to this question is that no you cannot mutually agree with your partner that you no longer wish to be part of the marriage the second question um, would be what is an uncontested marriage now mm, the term that is used for mutually agreed divorce in Kenya is uncontested divorces. Meaning that one party will file for divorce and the other party will remain silent, will not file a cross petition 
will not seek to challenge um, the allegations provided under the petition by one party and so this is referred to as an uncontested divorce and the and the court will go ahead and give a decree to that effect now let's go to the procedure for divorce what happens if you want to um, divorce this is what you do you approach your advocate and the advocate will draft a petition um, together with the petition they will accompany it with your statement where you'll be able to state the grounds for divorce in accordance to the Kenyan law that I have already provided for you. You will also accompany it with evidence um, that supports your allegation, be it cruelty, desertion, or depravity, extreme depravity. So you will accompany all those documents. You will file them in court. After filing them in court, you will take out a document called a notice to appear and you will serve it um, to your spouse. Now, your spouse has 15 working days to then respond. If they fail to respond, then they'll regard it as an uncontested divorce. If they respond, then you'll have to go to trial, draft a cross petition and go for hearing and then the court will decide um, to give you a decrease. After being given a decrease, you'll have to wait for 30 days or so to be given a decree absolute. Now, a decree absolute is a document that will render you legally divorced. The next question is, what is the impact on children of divorcing spouses? Now, Article 53 of the Constitution provides that courts will make decisions regarding children to their best interest meaning the best interest of the child is usually recognized um, during a divorce period now the divorce court lacks jurisdiction to handle or to hear any matters with regards to children and so divorcing spouses are encouraged to then institute another um other another proceeding under the children's court and the children's court then will look at the um the matter at hand and make the best decision um that is fit for that child and the last and final question or um topic that i'd like to handle is can one enter another marriage before their previous marriage has been dissolved now we started this video by discussing various types of marriages. If you enter into a Christian marriage, it means that you are declaring that you are potentially monogamous, meaning that you cannot then contract any other marriage while you're still uh, married to your current spouse. If you enter into a customary marriage, it means that you are declaring that you're potentially polygamous. So the answer is this. You cannot enter into another marriage if you're married under the Christian marriage, okay? And if you enter into a customary marriage, it means you're declaring to be potentially monogamous, meaning you can enter and contract eight, two, three, four marriages while you're still in that specific marriage. Thank you so much for indulging me. I'm hoping to hear from you. Comment down below what are the questions you have concerning divorce. Our social media platforms are um, included in the description down below, description box down below. Be sure to contact us for any question, any inquiry. We are open to we are open to answering any questions and also further representing you in any legal matter. See you next time. Same place, same time. God bless.